Texas Legislative Update. Today we're uh, excited to uh, have on our program a Representative Sid Miller, Chairman Sid Miller, who has just passed a historic piece of legislation through the Texas House that's one of the governor's emergency items. And uh, it's the sonogram bill, as it's known. And today we're going to have uh, Representative Sid Miller explain the details to us. Uh, many of us in the pro-life uh, organizations are very happy that Sid had the uh, strength and the courage to pass. So, Sid, we're glad to have you on the program today. We well, appreciate your doing this. It's, it's good to be with you, and, and uh, thanks for inviting me over to explain a little bit about the sonogram bill. Yeah, I tell you what, you, when you get into these detailed bills, Sid, sometimes I, I kind of get confused because I'm not a deep technical person. So, really? I, you as the author of this, <laughs> and both of us are ag people. I want well, that's you. true. So, we're, uh, well, I'm a country boy. Uh, so. That's kind of how it works. So, if there's any medical professionals out there, they may get kind of hung up on some of our terminology before we're through. Well, we, we'll get through it. That's we, right. We'll, 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 we'll get through it. Explain to us what the sonogram bill does. Well, actually, it's one of the measures the governor put on emergency measure. So, we took it, we can, t that means we can take it up early before the 60 day deadline is passed and that's what we've done here in the house we, we've uh, passed it out of committee passed it out of the house and and we're sending it over to the senate uh, basically what this bill is it's not so much about abortions or sonograms but it's about the woman being fully informed it's about informed consent before she agrees to have an abortion okay and, and what what does this require yeah you know, i know we want people to make an informed decision in anything to do especially with health so how does this inform the person and why is it it's had so much support in the state? Well basically before you have any medical procedure you go in and you have an MRI or an x-ray or echocardiogram or a, a CAT scan you have the opportunity to sit down with your doctor view that discuss your options and then if you just decide to have a procedure to correct that measure it's scheduled and it's usually a week or two out. Uh, abortions are the only medical procedure that you currently can just go in and have it done. There's, you don't meet the doctor. He doesn't tell you your options. Uh, you don't get to review the, the, the medical exams that, that are performed on you. So what this, this sonogram bill does, uh, you would go in, uh, the woman would go in, a sonogram would be performed. That's already being performed, so there's no extra cost. Uh, if, if a woman's going to uh, have an abortion, the sonogram must be performed. They have to know what size the fetus is. They need to know if it's twins or if they have a bifurcated uterus or just, you know, what all the complications could be because the, the different stages, life stages of the fetus, the procedure is different. Mm. Has it, has so that's done already. So there's no added cost. I think that's a misconception. So it's just it's a, it's a procedure that will inform the, the lady, the it's, girl, whoever? It's, well, the problem is it's the, the sonogram is already being done. Okay. But the sonogram is not presented to the patient. She never gets to see the sonogram. She never gets to visit with the doctor about, about what the sonogram means, how far along the baby is. Uh, so what this bill does would require that the sonogram be presented to the woman. She have at least 24 hours to go home, think about it, pray about it, make sure she's what she's doing because Many of these women came back and testified in committee that if they'd only seen the sonogram, they have uh, really emotional, disturbed, emotional problems later in life when they realize the consequence of what they've done. And it usually happens when they actually see a sonogram of an unborn child, approximately the same age that, that theirs was. And so it's a very traumatic experience. Yeah, so we're trying to head that off. We're it's psychological to... problems. That yes, you're absolutely. Off. You know, we think about the physical aspects are indeed important. And probably there's, there's regulation we need to have in that. Sure. It just probably helps. But the psychological afterlife of the experience of an abortion is something I think few really foresee. And I, I know as you are mentioning to the committees, I think in all areas of, of experience you find women that have experienced this and just are tortured the remainder of their lives. Absolutely. The mental problems that come from that. And, and the father too. It's yeah. not just, just to the woman. But what, what we do is we, the, the bill requires that they first provide a list of health care providers other than abortion facility that will offer these sonograms free. Okay. Like a pregnancy care center, they can go to that and get a free free sonogram. If they do uh, decide to have the sonogram at the abortion provider, the abortion provider can only charge for the cost of the sonogram. Currently what they do is they get collected 90 or 95 percent of the entire cost of the procedure. 
So if they decide not to have the abortion, they forfeit all those funds and it goes to the, to the abortion center. So we're going to head that off. The bill states that they must have the sonogram before any sedative or anesthesia is administered. We want to have a clear, clear, clean mind about what they're doing. Uh, it requires that the sonogram uh, be offered to view to the woman, that the sonographer or the doctor sit down with them, explain what they're seeing on the sonogram, and if there's a heartbeat present, they're uh, can, are supposed to listen to the heartbeat. Now, the woman can refuse to do any of this, but it all has to be offered. And once it's offered, there's affidavits that she signs that, yes, I was shown the sonogram. I was explained, the sonogram was explained to me in detail, and I heard the heartbeat. Or I choose, it was offered, but I chose not, I chose to. not to. So that, that's, you know. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's good to hear. I think a lot of people don't understand that this is totally voluntary by the, by the woman. Right. She can, she can refuse to. She can refuse it, but we want to make sure it's offered, okay. and that she has a chance to actually meet her doctor. Currently, they never meet the doctor. Uh, the only time they see the doctor is when he comes in the operating room. She's on the table, sedated, under anesthesia. Uh, he has a gown on, rubber gloves, a mask, a hat. All you see is his eyes. Uh, he does the procedure. Uh, discards the fetus, his rubber gloves, and walks out of the room. That's the only time they see him. No other procedure, at least that I've ever had done, did I not have the opportunity to at least meet my doctor and talk to him about the procedure. And that's what this does. The thing amazing, Sid, that, that I, I think from hearing this, it just makes common sense. It's, it's, not, it's something that when you have a medical procedure of that, that uh, enormity and, and psychological ramifications afterwards, that I think your bill totally makes common logical sense. And that's the trouble we have in government a lot of time. Common sense doesn't many times get interpreted into law. Right. And I commend you. This is something I think that, of course, believing as I think I do, I don't understand how people can be opposed to just totally information informing of a medical procedure before somebody has to experience it. Well, actually, I, I visited with a few of my uh, pro-choice legislators. And they agree that, say, you know, the last thing we want is an abortion. She said, I think you have a good bill. I'm probably going to vote for it and then many of them did because we're not outlawing abortions but what we're doing is making sure that the woman is fully informed that we fully have our consent that she understands what she's doing and she has all the medical terms has a chance to visit with the medical professionals about what she's doing it's not just a wham bam I'm out of here and uh, okay. uh, because they, these these women are under a lot of emotional stress when they come in there Chairman Miller, what about the procedure after this point. You pass the bill in the House, but where does it now go? Okay, what well, we've done, we, we, we passed it on second reading in the House, and as you know, just to make sure we didn't mess up, we come back the next day and we pass it again. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it's, it's gone to the Senate. It'll be assigned to a committee over there. It'll go through the same entire process that went through in the House. It'll go through the committee process, be brought, brought to the floor of the Senate. Uh, if they make any changes in it, uh, They'll send it back to the House. We will concur or not concur. If we don't concur, there'll be a conference committee appointed. Uh, we'll get together, dis decide on the, the, the final information that in the bill, send it back to both chambers. Hopefully it'll be passed and sent to the governor's desk. Now, if we can do this with a two-thirds vote in each chamber, it gives it immediate effect. Otherwise, we have to wait to the 1st of September for it to go into effect. Okay. What can the people do now? Now that it's passed, now if you've done your work in the House, what would you have the people that are watching today do that would help us to make sure this bill does get the two-thirds vote that would put immediately in effect? Well, what I would encourage them to do now is to uh, visit with their senators because the ball is in the senator's court now. They, they, they control this piece of legislation. We must have a committee hearing. We must get it out of committee. So we need people to, to contact their senators that they are in support of the sonogram bill, to, to move it along, make sure that we keep the 24-hour waiting period uh, in there because that's the key to the whole bill. We want these women to make sure that they have time to contemplate about the procedure they're fixing to have done. Uh, so it's the, the bill is 24 hours, no more than 72. That's very important. We want to move that through the process out of the committee, get it to a full vote on the floor of the Senate, and uh, if, if no changes, it goes to strict directly to the governor. Okay, so the, the voters now are encouraged that they support this bill to call their senators That's and correct. make sure that it's encouraging them, their senators, to make sure they support this Keep it moving. Keep Absolutely. It moving. Keep it moving. Hope it, do not let it get bogged down. 
We thank you for being with us today and appreciate Chairman Miller for sharing with us this important piece of legislation. Hope you'll tune in next week or to our next edition of the Texas Legislative Update. Have a good one. Thank you.